The Invisible Boy. Oh, we're getting a lot of different shadows. So let's go this way and read The Invisible Boy and see if we can cut down on the shadows a little bit. Whoa! Did you fall off your chair or did I fall off my chair? Or maybe the camera just fell. None of us fell. Let's see if we can get it so it doesn't have too many reflections. Maybe this way? Let's see. Let's see if that will work. The Invisible Boy. He doesn't look invisible to me. Oh, but we're getting so many reflections again. This book has been generously donated to the Camus Public Library. The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig. Can you see Brian, the invisible boy? Even Mrs. Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. See Nathan and Sophie, they're having a problem. So the boy next to them, is he really invisible or is it just because he's quiet and they're noisy? Nathan has a problem with Miss, with what Miss Carlotti calls volume control. He uses his outside voice inside too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her own way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball teams. The best players get picked first, then the best friends of the best players, then the friends of the best friends. Only Brian is left, still waiting and hoping. JT glances in Brian's direction and just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others. Let's play ball. Oh. Sad. They have six play. Oh, this team only has seven and this has six. There would be room for Brian. Oh. In the cafeteria. Madison and her friends talk about her birthday party. The rope swing over the pool was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so was the water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, says Madison. Everybody did except Brian. He wasn't invited. At choosing time, while the other kids play board games and read, Brian sits at the table doing what he loves to do best. He draws fire-breathing dragons, scaling tall buildings. This, this man is looking at the dragon saying, thank you for toasting my marshmallow. He also draws Space aliens locked in intergalactic battles. I got you now. Greedy pirates digging for treasure. Arr, crackers? Yay! And superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. Hi. Hi, friends. Have a cookie. On Monday morning... Mrs. Carlotti introduces Justin, a new student in the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made up their minds yet. At lunch, lunch Madison and JT watch Justin eat with chopsticks. 
What's that? asked Madison as she points at Justin's food. It's bulgogi. But what? Bulgogi. It's Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Do you want to try some? Thanks, but no way. It's uh, no way, Ollie, bulgogi. And the kids laugh, all of them, that is, except Brian. He sits there wondering which is worse, being laughed at or feeling invisible. The next day, when Justin goes to his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. Justin, I thought the bulgogi looked good. Brian, and see he's got chopstick in the hand and a little bubble that says yum. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing away. You're Brian, right? Yeah. Thanks for the note. Hey, Justin, Emilio calls out from the tetherball court. You're up next. Sorry, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he adds before taking off. See that drawing? That is really cool. Back in class, Mrs. Carlotti asked the kids to team up in twos or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads towards Justin. I'm all ready with Justin, said Emilio. Find someone else. Brian looks at the floor, wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Mrs. Car Justin said, Mrs. Carlotti said we can have up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio. Let Brian work with us. Okay, I guess. Mrs. Carlotti gives the instructions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in this photograph. Use your imagination and have fun. Whoa, cool, says Emilio. What kind of people do you think would live in houses like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pen. So he starts drawing and they're cutting and they're talking. Narrator, hi, I'm the narrator. And if you're wondering why a pirate got the part of a narrator, I'll tell you, it's all in the, in the agent. Well, now on with the tale. The crooked stay we made up on the spay. Oh, I don't know what they're saying. But look, they drew some really good pictures to go with their story. And Justin is a pirate. And one of them looks like a sea monster and the other one looks like a shark swallowing his head. That's pretty cool. It's lunchtime again. Brian's least favorite part of the day. Another 20 long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian, he hears someone shout, hey Brian, over here. Brian turns and sees Justin waving him over. Emilio nods at Brian as he makes room for him at the table. Cookies? Thanks. Maybe, just maybe, Brian is not invisible after all. And that's the end. I'm so glad that when Justin was new and people made fun of what he was eating, that Brian left him a little note. Maybe he was a little too reserved to say in front of him, so he left him a note. And then Justin was so nice to let him be included in the project. Isn't it nice when people help other people and include them and don't leave them out? Because if you leave someone out, they feel invisible. That's a good book, The Invisible Boy.